everybody, Shavrak here. And uh, for today's Platinum Solo, I am doing Firebase Giant against the Collectors. I am using the Turian Sentinel. I really didn't want to do Firebase Giant, but uh, I haven't done a Firebase Giant solo yet. I did Hazard with the, the Juggernaut, but I uh, haven't done the non-Hazard Firebase Giant yet. So if you haven't heard already, Invader1 has posted on BSN on the forums there a section that is uh shows all of the basically it's a platinum solo hall of fame it shows everyone who has submitted proof of their platinum solo it, it is on there your name is on there if it isn't and you do have proof a screenshot or a video please please uh look at the link there and submit that so that way uh invader one's archive can be as complete as possible uh it's it's a great thing that he's doing there promoting the game keeping the longevity of the game going and uh, you know, my hats off to everyone who's on that on that that board. It is a very difficult thing. It is the most difficult thing that you can do in this game. I am using the Turian Sentinel, like I said. Uh, how I'm using this character basically is uh, this is the standard place where everyone likes to start. Uh, it's just simple. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm using armored compartments. This was actually my first try. I wasn't even planning on uh, on making it all the way through this. Surprisingly enough, I did. Uh, it, it is one of the easier maps definitely to solo on Platinum. Uh, if you haven't done a Platinum solo yet, uh, I would definitely recommend either using this map or possibly Firebase White, or maybe just a map that you play a lot that you're very familiar and comfortable with. With uh, the Sentinel here, I, I'm doing a build where basically there is no Overload. Uh, overload is a very nice power. Uh, I'm not trying to sell it short here, but I'm using Incinerary Rounds with my uh, Harrier, and I'm using Warp basically I'm detonating fire explosions with warp uh, later on in the game I'm priming with warp and then I'm hitting him with uh, my harrier and then incinerate because it incinerate rounds because it does stack very well nice very nicely together I, I don't know exactly how the glitch works I, I wouldn't consider it a glitch really but th those two powers seem to do very well together uh, to not take advantage of that would be very foolish because that's just the way the build is it's, it's there so I, I might as well use it right so a big part of soloing collectors or even playing against collectors in general is a lot of people are turned off by the abominations. I think that we tend to relate abominations to husks, but in reality, the abomination is worth a lot off your wave budget. I talk about this a bit on my solo on Condor when I'm talking about the wave budget, uh, but just a refresher, I believe that they're 40 or 45 points off your wave budget, and on wave one, there's a total of 900 points. <coughs> So you got to think, you know, that's like 18, maybe 20 uh, of these abominations, and I'm through my wave budget on wave one. So kill as many of them as you can. They're very fast. They're going to get to you pretty much before any, any other enemy on the board for the most part. Um, so yeah, every time you get a chance to take one of those out, please take them out because that is going to knock your wave budget down really quickly. Uh, phantoms are, are worth 90, I believe, or 80. <coughs> so two abominations is worth one phantom. So I'm basically sticking to the standard clockwise rotation on this map. Uh, basically, corner to corner is, is kind of the strategy here uh, with brief pauses and, and little uh, turnarounds uh, here and there. But uh, for the most part, I'm starting at the wall up top and then kind of doing a horseshoe back to the ammo box and going around to where the ladder is. I, I really like to stop at the ladder back there. Uh, it, it does. It's really good for jamming up the enemies, and, and it gives you a, a moment to breathe, basically. After uh, dropping down the ladder, I definitely would say that between the the spawn and where the ladder is, that's where I'm, I'm spending the most of my time killing. Uh, the rest of the time is just kind of cutting them away, trying to get them bunched up a little bit, so that way I can, uh, you know, move safely around the map without getting pinched. So the Praetorians are very slow for the most part. Um, a lot of times they, they tend to be fast, but I, I find that in, in doorways they tend to get jammed up and they tend to jam up the enemies, which is really nice, honestly. Um, if they are moving fast and they're pushing you at a pace that is uncomfortable, uh, just go for that underbelly. I've mentioned this before. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that there is a, pretty much that that is their head for the headshot multiplier is that underbelly. If you play, if you pay close attention, you'll actually see that there's a plate on their underbelly. Once you do enough damage to that underbelly, you'll see that plate is missing. Um, Scions are also uh, basically I like to consider them kind of like a, they're almost a stationary turret, a stationary grenade launcher actually. Um, they, they're really 
high on the wave budget and if you shoot that sack on their back man, they drop so fast um, that's wave one I completed wave one and uh, this is I'm just gonna go over my rotation really quick I know a lot of you are very familiar with this rotation but for you uh, for those of you that aren't I, I'm gonna go over that right now for you guys so as you can see I started out right here I like to try and usually look at that spawn where that Praetorian was right there w before the wave starts that way it keeps the spawn from from uh, the keeps them from spawning there so I usually would horse you around the back I'll point it out on a different lap but because the Praetorian and those enemies spawn there I'm running straight through the, to the ladder I have mentioned that it is important to improvise it is important to think quick on the fly and to make decisions that may differ from your uh, initial plan or your initial rotation so what I've done here is uh, I've improvised because they're th where they were uh, that's normally where I would like to horse you around and run through I just ran straight through the middle uh, I am basically went down the ladder, I waited for a moment, and now I'm on the far corner of the map here. I'm going to hang out here for a little bit, and because I'm using the Harrier, I'm, you know, the Harrier is kind of a catch-22 weapon. It is so high in DPS, it is my favorite assault rifle by far, but if you notice, I spend a lot of time at ammo boxes. Um, because this is a Platinum Solo, it, it isn't as bad as it would be, say, if I was on a team of four and we were all holding down a position and I'm running back and I'm just basically hanging out by the ammo box and everyone else on my team goes back for ammo is wondering why there's no ammo right so uh, definitely I would recommend if you're on a team and if it's a bunch of randoms or even with your friends if you see someone with a Harrier it's probably not going to be a good idea to use a Harrier especially in unknown unknown because you might get a monkey wrench like Condor which is an extremely low level uh, of ammo on that map. So I'm back here where I started again. This time I know that that spawn over there uh, doesn't have any enemies there and so I'm gonna basically stick to my my uh, my main plan I guess you would call it. So I'm gonna try and slow that Praetorian down a little bit. I made it flip by shooting his underbelly and this is what I mean by horseshoeing around. I come around the backside of the spawn there and I make it to the ladder. I always drop down the ladder usually going sideways or backwards. Uh, a lot of times if you go frontwards it will make you actually use the ladder how you're supposed to use it if it was the real world but you really want to get down that ladder as fast as possible. So I'm at the bottom of the ladder. I move over to the left a little bit here and I'm just gonna pull the enemies down a bit. The Praetorian kinda made it to me fairly quick. Like I said sometimes they're really fast, sometimes they're really slow and I'm just gonna light up its underbelly as much as possible there and try and do as much damage as possible and hopefully making it flip to, to slow it down sort of like the same concept you're gonna do with banshees you if a banshee's pushing you faster than you wanna go you wanna try and do enough DPS to the banshee to where she just stops in her place and starts walking um, those are definitely two I would consider them kind of bullies of all the enemies they're always pushing you around the map pushing you <laughs> pushing you um, see there you go I, I hit that underbelly I don't know if you guys noticed or not but the, the, the plate was missing uh, and uh, it looks like a big bright aura of organs that you'll see behind the plate and that's how you know that that plate is gone uh, here we go see how I take the ladder sideways drop down um, definitely was a mistake I should have looked out there first before I dropped down because this ammo box right here you're very exposed uh, I definitely got out of there fairly unscathed I could have got insta killed by the Praetorian if I wouldn't have moved as fast as I did and, and high healed out of there so I'm back on my uh, my next rotation here and uh, this is like I said a very common place where people like to camp and start out the match uh, first time we played this match actually when I first got the game that was just kind of the thing we did we we spawned here and it just seemed like a good place to hold out and that's what we've been doing ever since uh, we definitely now I, I say we've evolved quite a bit and we we move around a lot more when we're playing four-man teams um, we usually actually what we've been doing lately is we just hold the whole top side of the map and we kind of spread out and then when we get pushed around a bit we'll rotate a bit and every so often we'll hold the high side of the map you know it's uh, it's definitely a map that I've played enough of to where I don't really like to play it anymore so I'm, I'm really glad that I got this solo my first try I'm really glad that I I really don't have to play this map ever again unless it comes up in unknown unknown but it is a great map I'm not trying to talk the map down or anything I, I've just spent so much time on it that it's uh, it's definitely an eyesore when I have to play it again but I would recommend it like I said if it's your first solo or if you know if you're not tired of this map it's it's a great map it's a uh, 
uh, it's very well balanced. Uh, there's lots of good cover. Um, the objectives are are very balanced. Uh, it's 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 a great map. It's it's actually I would consider it one of the better maps on the game if it wasn't for the fact that I've played it so much. So I'm sure you can notice here. Um, basically, I like to hang out at this bottom ladder as long as I can. You can see these these shots I'm pulling right here through the top of the ladder. I'm pretty much unscathed. Uh, until I get flanked on the left side here, then I rotate over here to this next pillar, or I'll run straight through to this other far corner of the map. Uh, there was a lot of opposition there. We saw two Scions. I think there was two Praetorians. Uh, I, I am not a hundred. Yeah, it looks like two Praetorians, two Scions, and uh, it, that's just a lot to deal with head on. So, like I said, every time that you start to get a little bit of pressure, or they're starting to push up on you, especially something of that magnitude. Uh, just move up the left flank, move up the right flank, uh, whatever you need to do. Uh, I'm finding myself more and more on solos. Like I, I usually favor either going clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the map. But I think it's good to be ready to go the other way if you need to. Uh, if you need to go counterclockwise and you're used to going clockwise, then you know it, it's good to practice it. It's good to be ready for that because a lot of times that's your only choice or it's the best choice. Um, it's uh, th there's definitely no set structured plan that's going to be foolproof for these solos. They're very difficult. They're they're very hard. And anyone who tells you otherwise is, I don't know, I'm not going to say a liar, but they're either really, really, really abnormally good or uh, or they're full of it. So so you know, never go into these expecting them to be easy. Never go into them expecting <coughs> to pull this off your first try. <coughs> So, as you can see there, uh, underbelly was exposed, uh, kept lighting it up under the belly there, and uh, dropped like a sack of potatoes. So, we have wave three here, and uh, I'm back at my starting point. Uh, this is an escort. Uh, definitely, I like escorts. I really do. I really, an escort or the deliveries, I, I definitely favor those devices, oh, I mean over devices. Um, devices are pretty much the bane of my existence with solos next to targets. Um, definitely not not a fan of targets. Um, if you can get devices and uh, and do it comfortably, they they can go very smoothly. If you're if you're quick and you pull the enemies to the right part of the map, I I, I think on bigger maps is where you're going to find the devices aren't as much as of of a hassle or a bother than say on uh, Glacier. Uh, glacier devices are uh, my last solo actually on Glacier that I did. I, I did it on uh, Glacier Hazard against uh, the Geth. It was definitely one of my better solos that I've done. One of the ones I'm more proud of, anyways. Um, I got devices on 10, and I am amazed that I pulled that off because that map, by the time you start a device or move to another device, the enemies can get you so fast that really it's 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 just very difficult. Let me make a long story short here. So what I'm doing here is I'm hanging out on this far corner of the map as, as long as possible. I know the enemies are pretty much all to the bottom right. And I'm just trying to get them as far away from this uh, escort as possible. So I'm going to uh, pull them away as much as possible, kill as many enemies as I can that are on it, and uh, just try and get this thing moving. Uh, if I have to, then I'll, I'll make another lap around the map. If not, then I'm going to pull this in for a safe landing. So it looks like, I mean, if you notice, he... he Oh, man, this, these these Turians, these original Turians, even the new Turians, don't get me wrong, are they deal so much DPS. They're uh, the only real thing that bothers me about them is just not having an evade. But they are very quick on their feet. Uh, despite not having an evade, they they do they strife very quickly. Uh, they run very quickly. Uh, they turn very quickly. Also, like if I need to turn a 360, I notice that the Krogans are kind of sluggish when you turn, and then you play a Turian, and it's like you're on a swivel. It feels like almost. So I'm pulling them away for a third and final time here, uh, which is not a big deal. It's uh, you know a big part of doing these solos and doing these objectives is being patient, not getting overzealous. Uh, if you get too hungry for getting the objective done, it's going to cost you equipment, and equipment is so precious on solos. You, you don't want to just sacrifice equipment. You don't want to just, you know, to get wave three done. It's much better to make that third and final pass than it is to blow a meta gel into survival ops because that can make or break your solo down the road. And, you know, depending on the enemy, for example, Geth, uh, wave nine is, is really, really hard. And if you go into wave nine with one meta gel and one survival ops, you know, that 
that can be the most frustrating thing in the world if you don't pass it because you only need one more meta gel that you just decided to waste on a on a, a pointless thing early on in the game. So if you notice, um, all the enemies were at the bottom of the map, right around uh, where the objective, where I parked the objective, and uh, I quickly got out of there. Uh, definitely way too much to handle, just in that tight little spot, and I came back to the beginning. Uh, I really like at the end of an objective wave to try and get as close to my starting point as possible. I, I really value having a set spot where I start each wave. It, it just it centers me, it, it gets my mind in focus, and it controls the spawns to some extent so I know where they're starting, I know where to pull them. Now right here if you notice I'm looking into that little uh, room over there before the wave starts and that way I'm forcing the spawn down low to the bottom right by doing that. Uh, that's definitely a practice that I like to do when I play four, uh, four players on this also, is uh, have one person go sit in that room before every, every wave begins, and that just kind of helps push the spawn out. It gives you some breathing room, uh, it creates some nice long line of sights that enemies have to go through, which you can basically chip away at the wave budget with by you know mowing them down while they expose themselves trying to gain ground on your team. So I've horseshoed around, I've gone through here, I'm going to drop down the ladder, I know this is a bit redundant, but uh, I just want to repeat it so that way, you know, people that are trying to learn this solo can, you know, can get a, a solid idea of how it works. If you notice the Banshee stops up top, you do have to be careful of warp bombs. Uh, with a character that evaded, I would have just dodged that, but uh, what I probably should have been doing here is gone behind this, yeah, this blocker right here and uh, then, then laid my fire up top of the ladder from there. That way I could uh, take quick cover if uh, Banshee drops a warp bomb on me. Um, if you notice, uh, I'm back on this corner of the map now. I'm going from ammo box to ammo box. And uh, keeping this Harrier going, if you notice, uh, it's really quick. Like, I'm, I'm dropping ammo so fast. Uh, with a character like the Geth uh, Infiltrator with Hunter Mode and, and getting, or any kind of uh, firing rate bonus, the Destroyer or using Marksman, for example, on the on the Corian that has Marksman or on uh, the Turian Soldier, uh, I, I would just be flying through ammo so fast I don't think I could keep up with it. So I'm back to this corner of the map, hitting in the ammo box again. Uh, I definitely think I could have finished this solo a lot quicker if I would have used a different weapon maybe that had a little bit more ammo. Um, I spent a lot of time waiting for ammo. I, I definitely noticed that, especially in the later rounds. Uh, but the warp, you know, priming the enemies was beautiful. Uh, getting the fire explosions really, really helped. As you can see, I'm down to 43 and 16. I'm back on the ammo box, and I'm just sitting here waiting for it to fill up again. Uh, that's definitely something right there. you got to be really careful. Usually the Banshee won't come through that part of the wall. She'll come a little bit further up. But you got to always keep in mind that that can happen. A big thing about soloing is just knowing your enemies, you know, knowing how they're going to move, knowing where they're going to be, when they're going to be there. A Banshee will surprise you. Uh, a lot of times Banshees pull that. Uh, they just they will come through the wall. So, you know, doing a solo over and over again, it's, it's so much trial and error. I would definitely, you know, when I go into these solos, usually the first couple times, I don't even expect to, to pass it. And once in a while I do. Like, for example, this one right here. Uh, I just, I go in and it's all about working out the kinks, working out the bugs. Uh, definitely watching other people's solos, I should probably do that more often. If I did that, I probably wouldn't have to make as many mistakes that I make. I would be able to learn from other people's mistakes. So I, I would definitely recommend like watching other people's solos if there's a solo that you want to do yourself. Uh, definitely watch it. Watch the mistakes that they make. Watch the positioning and the, the spots that they stop at, the choke points that they exploit. Um, you know, make a mental note of all this and it will make your solo go that much smoother. So I know this is a little off topic here, but uh, I wanted to take the time to talk a bit about myself here a little bit uh, and, and what kind of got me into gaming and, uh, and on and on anyways. So I grew up at a base in Japan. Uh, I probably moved there when I was about oh, 11 or 12. <coughs> and. Uh, there wasn't a lot to do there when I first got there. I remember that, you know, the, the military base was probably around 20,000 people. Uh, the school, like everybody that was at the school there for the most part lived on the military base. And I lived probably about well, at least a 45 minute drive off the base. So really the only social life I had was at school. And uh, we actually lived in an apartment complex that was 
I bought a four-story higher par apartment complex, and on the first floor there was an arcade. And I mean, I'm not talking like like the kind of arcade that you see at the movie theater where they have like maybe you know 15 games or so and a ping pong. I mean, a uh, what do you call it? It was a air hockey table. You know, I, I'm talking like you know 300 plus games. Like th this thing was massive. And when I mean massive, <clears throat> I mean like. At least like fifteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand square foot. Like this thing was huge, and that, that's very common in Japan. Uh, the video game scene there is just huge. Uh, there's another place called Big Shots right off the the main road off the base there, and uh, this thing was like five stories of just video games. Uh, they have pachinko parlors, which I guess you could consider a video game. On like every train station has like four or five pachinko parlors, like right off uh, the the main uh, flat that you exit the train station from. So the video game culture there is just huge. I remember seeing uh, TVs in, in their department stores that came with like Nintendos built into the top of the TV. So I mean, it's, it's a really big culture there. Uh, I know that it's, it's really over this last 10 years uh, in the US, Canada and all over Europe, uh, basically all over the world, it's expanded uh, to the point where it's the number one form of entertainment uh, over top of watching movies even. Well, anyways, uh, back to Japan. So we were uh, basically, I, I started developing a lot of friendships with uh, a lot of Japanese. Uh, I got really competitive in the Street Fighter. Uh, they would have consoles, basically like 10 to 14 of uh, these stationary consoles, uh, basically like uh, a lower version of your standard arcade game. And they would have them back to back. And what you would do is you would compete for the first, the first chair and uh, you'd work your way up basically and there's the Japanese are so committed they're so dedicated in everything they do it, it, basically you would see the same people there every day playing the same games and uh, just you know it was just very competitive and so I got really into Street Fighter for quite a long time uh, basically you know I did have Nintendo I did have uh, when I was very very young I think my mother had Pong on uh, the, the original Atari that she would let me play. That was when I was probably three or four years old, though. So, you know, video gaming has been it's been a big part of me growing up. I, I definitely... I played a lot of role-playing games, too. Uh, Morrowind, uh, Final Fantasy, you know, like all those single-player games. Uh, Metal Gear, I was really into Metal Gear, too. Um, and, and just kind of slowly started gravitating towards first-person shooters. Uh, that's been the main focus probably for me over this last five years has been first person shooters um, I, I did I take a hiatus from Mass Effect actually for when Black Ops 2 came out and I uh, was really competitive with, with uh, Black Ops 2 um, they have a league play system there I'm sure a lot of you may be familiar with uh, our team we took uh, fifth place on one of the, one of the league play teams uh, for Masters Division. So I mean, I never got to where I was pro. You know, maybe someday that might be a, a route I might try to explore. But uh, you know, I, I think that focusing on this channel is, is a bit more positive. I find that Call of Duty can be very negative and very draining. Uh, when any when it, when it, anything becomes very competitive, I think that it can bring out the worst in a lot of people. Uh, I do enjoy playing Call of Duty still, uh, other than the lag compensation. I think that it's a it's a great game. Uh, I I played Battlefield Bad Company two and uh, Battlefield three pretty religiously. I I really enjoyed Bad Company two for its time. I thought it was uh, very advanced. The dedicated servers really uh, it made it a lot more even and fair. I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize about the whole uh, Xbox One and PlayStation Four thing is that the network support that Xbox offers is phenomenal. Uh, as we go more and more into video gaming and uh, the future of video gaming, I think we're finding more and more co-op games are starting to become uh, more popular. Uh, for example, Mass Effect 3, what we're playing right now, what we're, uh, sorry, what we're watching right now, uh, I think a big part of its success is that it's a co-op game. We're not competing against other players. We're playing together against one common enemy, I guess you would call it, to uh, you know work together to to build our characters properly, to contribute to the team, and to uh, you know and, and to do well together as a team. And and the rewards are great. 
you know it's uh, not just satisfa uh, satisfying you know to yourself but you know you get more XP you get more credits to get more Spectre boxes premium Spectre boxes etc unlocking new weapons uh, I think that you know as we go more and more in the future for example Destiny uh, the MM it's going to be a massive MM uh, MMO and uh, it's I think it's going to be the next big thing honestly uh, we have Elder Scroll Online coming up. We have uh, The Division that's coming up, which is another amazing co-op game. Uh, all these games that are coming out are, are becoming more and more popular. I think multiplayer and playing on networks is just, it's, uh, it's the way of the future, I believe. Uh, when people hear about the cloud, I think that a lot of people think that it's just an online storage device. But really what Xbox has done here is they've got 300,000 servers that they have committed to hosting games for us. Now these are these are servers that are more powerful than our Xbox. So when we play Mass Effect or we play Call of Duty, there is one person who is basically given the host and he is using his Xbox or his PlayStation or whatever to basically host the game, right? So he has a massive advantage over say the guy that's not host who lives in Hawaii and the host is living in Florida, right? Like it's, it's the lag in a gunfight can be, it will dictate who wins the gunfight, you know, nine out of 10 times. If you have a one to two second advantage, I mean, that, that's just huge. That's massive. And so Xbox has realized this. And uh, also, you know, when we're playing this game and let's say you're a Vanguard and you're playing off host or you're trying to use a GPS and you're off host and your bullets are going through enemies, your tack cloak isn't disabling when you want it to disable. Like all, all these things are going to become a thing of the past with Xbox One. Uh, I think the PlayStation 4 is an amazing system. Uh, I think that it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very good system, but just the fact that Xbox is giving this network support, uh, I'm sold. I'm sold on the idea. Uh, I, I think that you know buying a PlayStation 4 is not a bad decision. It just depends on the kind of games that you want to play and what you're looking to get out of these systems. For me, playing online is so important that having dedicated servers that are dedicated to making these games as, as seamless as possible is, is just a, a massive selling point for me. I don't quote me on this, but I believe I read that PlayStation has 35,000 servers. Now, 35,000 servers compared to 300,000 servers, and you got to think also that PlayStation 4s are selling, I think in Europe it was 8 to 1. I think in Canada it's 8 to 1. In the U.S. it's like 4 to 1. So the Sonys are, are overselling. Well, I wouldn't say overselling, but they're selling a lot of units compared to Xbox. So I, I, if you guys know what bottlenecking is, on the highway let's say there's construction on the highway and we have four lanes and all of a sudden these four lanes have to be congested into one lane right it's called bottlenecking i think that we're going to have the same effect on the playstation 4 we're going to have all these people that are driving their cars and all of a sudden they're all going to be trying to fit through one little teeny lane and i think that there's going to be a lot of problems with that i think that people are going to get dropped from games or they're just not going to be able to get into games to begin with uh, Sony has a really bad track record for their network. I believe it was out of last year, two months out of last year they were down because their network got hacked. So I'm really iffy, I'm really nervous about uh, Sony and and buying a, buying a PlayStation 4 just because of that reason alone. I know the PlayStation has some exclusive games that uh, are not going to be available on Xbox One and vice versa. The Xbox One will have some games that are exclusive to Xbox One. So really, I, I, I would recommend if you guys are going to get a PlayStation 4 or if you guys are going to get an Xbox One and you hear people talking, you hear what I'm saying right now, instead of making your decision right away, I mean, just go on Google, type in the question, look up some articles, actually do some research because, I mean, this is a really big investment. This is not like going out and buying an arcade version of the Xbox 360 for 90 bucks or 100 bucks. This is a $500 investment, and that's without tax. Uh, the PlayStation is $100 cheaper, uh, but you don't get the Kinects. You don't get your camera and your, your mic or whatever. So, I mean, th that is what you're paying for. And, uh, you know, really do, do, do your homework, you know, like figure this stuff out for yourself because uh, there's so much speculation going on right now. It's, it's just madness. I mean, what people are saying, what people are coming up with. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever did this when you were kids, but I remember when I was uh, a kid, 
we had this thing in class where we did is we had like 20 students and uh, told the first student to say something like Jill went to the park and then ran up the hill or something. And then that person whispered that into the next person's ear. That person whispered it into the next person ear, person's ear. And by the time it got to the last student, it was like uh, Jill was on the Ferris wheel going down the hill on a bicycle and got hit by a car, right? You know, like, so, I mean, it's just amazing after, you know, speculation gets passed to person to person to person. And, you know, really, I, I would just recommend doing your homework, uh, figuring these questions and finding these answers out for yourself. Because, like I said, this is a big investment. I've actually pre-ordered both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. I, I'm still doing some homework. I, I might get both. I, I'm Right now, I'm, I'm definitely gravitating more towards the Xbox One. But uh, this is something that you guys are going to have to live with. You know, it's it's a big investment. Unless you're really, really rich and really wealthy and it doesn't matter to you, which I'd say 99% of you out there, that's not the situation. Uh, I would <laughs> I would either I would recommend doing your homework. Um, but I'm a little off track here. I think I was talking about Japan. Uh, but I'm just kind of trying to fill some time here until we get to the next objective wave. Uh, like I said, Japan. I grew up in Japan. Um, I've always been very pro-Japanese products because I know their culture. I know that they have a lot of care and a lot of uh, what's the word honor uh, they they really they really seem to care about their their customers they seem to value their customers um, if it wasn't for this whole lack of network support thing I would be all over the new PlayStation honestly um, I do have I did sorry I did have a PlayStation 3 and I have played Mass Effect uh, 3 on the PlayStation 3 and I'm sure that you guys that play PlayStation know that it is very difficult. The the loading times are lower, uh, a little bit laggier. Um, I think that that all comes down to having the, the network support. Um, I think that it is a very good unit, though. I mean, it's you you play games that are that are campaign oriented, that are single player, and that's when the PlayStation Three really shines. I actually traded my PlayStation Three in for credit towards my next console. Because uh, I, I just found that it was more of a paperweight than I, I just never used it. Uh, I, I played it maybe once in eight months. But everyone's different. Everyone's unique. We all have our own set of needs and our own set of wants and our own set of ideas of what's good and what's bad. So, like I said, make make your decision on the homework that you do. Look into things. You know, don't just take Buddy's word for it. Don't just take my word for it. You know, like l look at this stuff. Do your homework. So back to Japan again. I keep on getting off topic here. Uh, yeah, like I said, I grew up in Japan. Uh, it was a beautiful country. Man, it was so beautiful. I, I, it's weird. It's just the energy there, the people there. It's just, it's such a different experience. That more more so than anywhere else in the world that I've lived. Uh, it's, it's very rainy. I'll definitely say that. There was two monsoon seasons where it rained basically a month straight out of the year. It was. Uh, and I'm not just talking rain, I'm talking like massive downpours. I'm talking when you're walking down a hill and you see an inch and a half thick r water. It's like a, uh, just trickling down down the side of the hill. It was, it was unreal how much it rained there. Uh, the heat and the humidity during the summer was so hot and so unbearable. I actually, when I was about 16, 15 years old, I started skateboarding. Um, a big part of it was because I, I lived off the base. Um, I made a lot of Japanese friends, and if any of you guys are into skateboarding, man, Tokyo, Japan is the place to be. Oh my goodness, uh, there is just so many places to skateboard there. The skateboard scene, honestly, whatever you are into, I think a big part of it is because there are so many people in such a small space that whatever scene you are into, there is a big scene for that scene. There's a lot of people that are into whatever you're into, no matter what it is for the most part. So, you know, I got into skateboarding, and there were so many people there that were into skateboarding. It was, I never had a hard time making friends when I started skateboarding. There was always people there to hang out with, to go skateboarding with. Uh, same, I think I started, when I was playing video games on a daily basis at the parlor, uh, that's pretty much when I started meeting a lot of people that were sk into skateboarding. Um, they would hang out there, and then they would go skateboard afterwards for a bit. And just little by little, I, I got my foot in the door with uh, with a, a crew of guys that skateboarded. And uh, we would go to train stations. We would go all over downtown and skateboard. And it was just, other than the rain for two months out of the year, it was one of the best experiences that I had as far as skateboarding goes and as far as living in another country goes. It was so much fun. Uh, the Japanese are really, they're really good about, 
it, there's a lot of public parks there and I'm not talking skateboard parks I'm talking just like parks for people um, there's so much to do there as far as going out and seeing sights and hiking and and, and stuff like that there there's just a, you really people say it's really expensive there to do stuff I guess it just depends on what you want to do uh, there's a lot of like I said a lot of public parks that are free um, other than the, using the trains, I guess the trains could be a bit expensive after a while. Going out and eating is a bit expensive, but uh, it's it's just such a beautiful culture. It was such an amazing place to be. I, I'm so grateful for that experience in my life. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, like I said, the people are very honorable there. They're even if they don't like you and they don't want you there, they they're still polite to you. They still show respect. They're not disrespectful. Um, you could uh I remember we we were bored once and we made a trip to Mount Fuji and uh it was completely free other than paying for the gas to get there like it was completely free and that was such a beautiful thing I I don't I think that that was one of the most beautiful things I ever saw is when we got above the cloud line and I remember we were coming back down and the sun was starting to go down it was starting to set and uh, I don't remember what station it was exactly, but I remember being just barely above the, cl the cloud line and seeing the sunset. And I'm sure you guys have all heard about sunsets in Japan and sunrises and, you know, land of the rising sun, right, they call it or whatever. Anyways, uh, it was the sun, it was just so massive. And I remember seeing it disappearing behind the cloud line. And yeah, definitely one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had in my life. I'll never forget that. Um, I, if you've never been to Japan, and you ever have an opportunity to go, I would capitalize on that in a heartbeat. Uh, go teach English. Go as an exchange student. Uh, you know, experience these things. We only live once. You know, well, as far as I know, anyways, we only live once. You know, uh, make the most out of out of your life. Uh, you know, uh, I I know that this is kind of cheesy, but I tell people this uh, every once in a while. Um, Nike has a, a logo, right? And we all know what that logo is, right? Just do it, right? Uh, so many of us, we sit around and we make excuses for why we don't want to do things, why we don't want to progress, why we don't want to go out and do certain things. And it just comes down to it. Just do it. You know, just do it. You know, you, you, what do you have to lose by, by trying and just doing it? You know, unless the decision is robbing a bank, then, yeah, probably you probably don't want to do it. But, <laughs> but you know, go to Japan. Go, go travel. You know, do, do things. Progress. You know, enjoy life. Uh, I, I I definitely am very happy for the, the experiences I've had and and now I, I live here in British Columbia one of the most beautiful places in the world I, I love it here and I, I wouldn't sh trade my home for anything I, I do <clears throat> I do miss Japan I really do I, I have dreams of Japan I, I get homesick all the time I, I that's where I spent the majority of my life so I do I consider that home uh, I miss my friends there I I really do, but you know, I have my son now to take care of. I have I have uh, a beautiful life here. I'm very happy. Um, you know, doing these YouTube channel, uh, playing Mass Effect with all my friends, and you know, I, I really I'm, I'm I'm I can definitely say I'm very happy. I'm very content with my life. I I, I can only wish the same for everyone else. Um, anyways, that that's that's a big part of my life. A big part of my experiences was was Japan and. Uh, I just wanted to share that a little bit with you guys, uh, just to fill some time. I don't know if you guys find this interesting or not, but anyways, uh, let's get back to the game here. So, I am on wave, I believe this is wave 7. I just did the objectives. And as you can see, I am horseshoeing them around. Started back at the starting point there. Uh, we got double Praetorians on my tail. And uh, they are ruthless. I would say they are the hardest part of dealing with collectors. Um, they, y the biggest thing with them, I think, is you want to make sure before you turn around and deal with them that you're, that you're in a spot where you can avoid their their missiles or their double I beams or whatever they're called. They really are not that difficult to deal with as long as you have cover available quickly, right? If if you are standing in the open, then they're going to drop you. That's all there is to it. So I would recommend when dealing with them, just cover to cover, cover to cover, always stay in cover to cover. Don't backpedal, sprint to the next cover point, then turn around. And the same kind of strategy you'd want to use with a character that can't evade. You usually don't want to backpedal with Krogans or with uh, the, the Turians, the original Turians, sorry, or the Batarians. Uh, you want to move from cover to cover. 
Uh, when you backpedal, what happens when a banshee ball is thrown at you? You're, you're really vulnerable. There's not much you can do at all. Or there, or the Praetorian's rockets, for example. There's just not a lot you can do. So I would definitely recommend, if you're going to solo against collectors, or if you're going to use any character that can evade, just move cover to cover. It's it's the best way. It's pretty much the only way to deal with uh, with enemies on a platinum level, anyways. Um, you know, you just just be in a position where you can take hard cover really quick, and uh, and you're doing all right. If you're about to get pushed out of your position, then move fast, move to the next cover point or the next choke point. Uh, that finishes up that wave, and looks like I got my platinum waves for giant finished. Working on my map mastery for I don't even know how many times. I really don't pay attention to the challenge points too much, but uh, but here we go. I'm I'm waiting at the ammo box, getting my ammo going. Uh, next wave is beginning, and it uh, looks like we got a prime over there and a lot of bombers. Um, this is definitely a wave that I, I find is one of the easier waves, wave 8. Um, just a lot of bombers. They're not worth much on the point, uh, on the the wave budget. I think you get 30 points for each bomber, so you know you have to kill three bombers basically to equal a prime or an atlas or a banshee. Uh, a little bit more than three, actually. But, um, you know, every little bit counts, so they, they definitely push you very fast, they, uh, they're very quick, but the good news with them is when they get to you, they, they have a little zap and that's about it. As long as you can move out of there fairly quick, you have, uh, they drop their stream of, of bullets, I mean of uh, grenades, and then you can just high heal out of there. Um, I'm getting pushed pretty quick here, so I'm going to drop down this ladder as soon as I can, and I'm going to hang out down here after grabbing ammo and uh, just wait a second and you know hopefully take some of these bombers out and knock this wave budget down a little bit I definitely uh, I, I would like some feedback you know if, if you guys find that you know my rambling and my talking about my life a little annoying just uh, let me know if you guys if you guys like hearing about my life and you guys want me to talk a little bit more about stuff like that then let me know uh, I, I'm trying to make this the best channel that it can be I'm always looking to improve my channel um, you know, Invader and I were talking. He's, he, he was the one actually that recommend talking a little bit about my life here and there. Uh, I, I know I only have about 400 subs. I'm not trying to pretend like I'm someone famous that everyone wants to know. But, you know, it's, uh, this is my channel and it's, you know, I, I try to make it as, as good as possible. I, I want this to, to be the best possible channel that it can be. Um, so yeah, give me feedback. I'm always open to feedback, whether it's good or bad. I, I take everything that everyone says to heart. Uh, I, I don't get offended very easily. I, I, I take it as constructive criticism. I, I have gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of you in the past, and uh, I always remember what you guys say, and I'm always trying to you know incorporate your ideas and, and make make this channel not only about me, but I want it to be. I want it to be about the community. I, I want this to be a source for or an outlet for you guys to go to. To, to maybe even, you know, like, meet people. Like, I, I know the Invader and I have talked a bit about hosting, um, uh, what do you call it, public events on uh, the new game Destiny that will be coming out. And we're going to be basically including our subscriber base on uh, basically hosting public events. And I'm going to be putting out messages and notifications to people basically saying, okay, at this time on this day, there will be a public event, right? And then whoever wants to play and whoever wants to be included in this public event can message me back and then we'll we'll send invites out and we, we plan on doing this every day uh... F when destiny comes out and any other game that has that kind of a capability we will be doing if you guys ever want to play games with me on xbox you know send me a message send my send my gamer tag a message and you know if, if i'm on and and i see that message uh, if i have room on my party i'll invite you guys uh, don't take it personal if I don't invite you. I, I try my best to invite everyone that I get messages from. Uh, you know, syncing up with you guys a lot of times doesn't work out, right? You know, it's if I get on at 3 in the morning because I can't sleep and, you know, you guys are sleeping and I send you a message, then, you know, I, I'm doing my best here to, to, you know, build the community and to help you guys feel involved and maybe potentially uh, get you guys to meet other players that, you know, if you guys ever have a hard time finding people to play with, especially on a platinum level, um, you know, I, I can definitely help out with that. Um, I know this as this game fades out and as this game becomes less and less popular, that it's going to be harder to find people to play with. So I really, I really want to make this community the best community that it can be. I, I want to increase the longevity of this game. I really want people to 
uh, to keep playing it. It's a great game. It's it's so much fun. There's so much to know and learn on this game. It's just unreal. Uh, it's one of the highest learning curves, I think, any game out there. I mean, Morrowind, uh, Oblivion, uh, Elder Scrolls, all the Elder Scrolls games, you know, have a very, very high learning curve. But it's it's different. It's uh, that's a single player game. You know, this is this is co-op, right? So, you know, it it, it just it's just a different element. Um, one of the highest learning curves that I, I've ever experienced in a game is this game right here. I, I cannot wait for the next Mass Effect, man. Oh my gosh. When the next Mass Effect comes out, I can't even imagine how good it's going to be. I, I'm imagining that it's going to be a lot like this, but with a lot less bugs. And if you play it on Xbox, there will be dedicated servers hosting your games. So uh, not trying to sell you guys on Xbox or anything, but uh, yeah, it will be. It will be... Uh, all major titles will be hosted on dedicated servers for Xbox One. Um, I know that uh, the Destiny, uh, what's it called, the beta, I know they're taking for pre-orders and I'm, you might be able to go to their website and you might be able to get on the list for playing the beta for uh, Destiny. So if you guys are interested in Destiny at all, I would highly recommend uh, looking into that, maybe pre-ordering the game and getting on that beta list because uh, I'm sure that's going to be coming out here in the near future, and uh, that game, it just looks so amazing. Uh, Invader and I, actually, keep your eyes open if you're interested. We're going to be doing a dual commentary probably tonight or tomorrow. Uh, there's a new trailer out. It's about the moon. Um, I've, I've got a couple of comments from some friends saying that, you know, all oh, the enemies look so hokey, you know, uh, it looks really cheesy. And then I, I basically, my, my answer to that was, watch it again. Uh, most of that trailer, if you guys notice when it comes out, most of that trailer is cinematics and cutscenes. Uh, if you actually watch that trailer and just pay attention to the gameplay, just pay attention to the first person perspective that, that you, you experience when you're playing for playing the actual game. And uh, it is much, much different than the cutscenes. The, 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 the real-time lighting, the the colors are so vibrant um, the fluid the it's so fluid your movements are so fluid on that game I I am just so excited for destiny um, Elder Scroll Online looks really good too but honestly I have time for one or the other and uh, destiny I think is more more what I'm looking for uh, they do have a 10-year plan I know I've mentioned this before uh, they will have destiny content coming out for the next 10 years back to back uh, I mentioned this on the uh, the dual commentary of the Invader and I did the first one. Uh, they have basically the first Destiny will be coming out, uh, I believe, in March or uh, sometime next year. Anyways, 2015, uh, past the the first quarter, and uh, they will have one year following that a massive expansion coming out. And uh, from what they're saying, this expansion is going to be basically the size of a completely new game. One year after that, then the, se the second Destiny will be coming out. Then one year after that, the expansion. Then one year, the third Destiny. Then the, f then the next expansion, the year after that. And then the, th the, uh, the following Destiny. And it will just keep going over the next ten years. So that is a lot of content. And that is just, uh, I think that's what I'm looking for. I think that's what I need. I, I think that it, it, that's just going to be amazing. The way this game looks, the way things are, are structured, and what they're saying is, is everything that I want to hear. Um, I will definitely be doing a lot of content on the next Mass Effect. Uh, that will be my priority when that comes out. Uh, depending on when Destiny has come out uh, in ratio to when the next Mass Effect comes out, we'll, we'll see how much time I put into Destiny as, uh, as uh, Ma the Mass Effect 4. But I'll definitely be putting a lot into both. Um, I will be that will be my job. I will just be putting as much content out for you guys as possible. I'm going to try and make the community the best possible community that I can help contribute to to it being. Um, and I, I just I really want to see a big group of positive-minded people uh, getting all my subscribers involved. Uh, you know, I, I just, I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be a really positive thing. I think it's going to be great. So, anyways, keep an eye out for that. Uh, that beta will be out soon. Uh, this is Wave 9, I believe. 8 or 9. Um, so this is what I brought the armor compartments through uh, for. Uh, I want you guys to see here what, what I'm doing. Basically what I'm doing is I have a... 
incendiary rounds here, and I'm just trying to basically keep the enemies back as much as possible. I'm going to try and jam them up at this choke point here. And uh, as, lo as long as I can jam them up and get as many of them as possible jammed up at this choke point, I can pull out a rocket and nuke them again. And so I'm going to do as much DPS as I can, keep as many of them back as possible, and as soon as I see a good opportunity, I'm going to pull out my rocket launcher and I'm going to nuke them. Um, this will save a lot of time on your on your runs. Bringing armor compartments obviously is going to save a lot of time uh, if you use your rockets properly, especially because you're you know you're killing five, six, seven enemies at a time sometimes, right? So that's a lot of time it takes to kill enemies, especially collectors. I find I find that a lot of collectors, the Praetorians, they they take a lot of effort. They take a lot of time to kill. Uh, this map is a is a fairly big map also. Um, I'm trying really hard to make my solos faster, but uh, I this is a big map, and I, I do, I play very cautious, I I'm not a as aggressive as some people, and uh, and here we go, second nuke right there, kabam. Um, I believe it takes me three, maybe four nukes, and I, I've pretty much destroyed the entire wave uh, with just nukes here. Uh, we'll just wait and see. Yeah, so here comes the next prime. Um, that guy raced up pretty quick there. The pyros, you really got to watch those pyros, man. They will melt you so fast. And I'm going to pull my next rocket out, and it uh, looks like wave complete. Uh, that was definitely a very quick wave. Uh, I can definitely say that on solos, uh, you want to find out what the tough higher wave is. There's always going to be one, whether it's wave 8 or wave 9, depending on the faction. Uh, it's using two rockets to nuke. Uh, a couple, I'm not going to say spawns, but a couple large group of enemies really speeds things up. Um, I, I know I mentioned before I'm trying to make my solos a little quicker. Uh, I, I just, uh, I do, I play very cautious, maybe a little too cautious at times. Uh, as I get more and more experienced at doing this, uh, I'll speed them up more and more. I, I have a couple that are under an hour, and uh, I'm getting better at them. I'm learning what I can get away with. I'm learning what uh, I can't get away with, etc. So, I am on wave 9 here. Uh, this wave is definitely an easier wave than 8. Uh, I really don't need to nuke anything. Uh, it's, I think it's always important that you have 4 rockets, at least 4 rockets. You know, 3 is kind of a little risky. Uh, wave 10, you never know if you're going to get targets or not. And uh, wave 10 is a very difficult wave on any faction against uh, to, to do the objective. So I mean, if you get targets, against collectors on wave 10 and you don't have any rockets left it's going to be very difficult to separate the majority of the enemies from that target to to single him out long enough to be able to take him down um, like geth for example the geth you always have primes they're always primes for the targets so i mean they do move slower than the rest of the enemies so it's not as bad getting them separated from the rest of the enemies but still uh, primes are very difficult they're very strong enemies um, the amount of DPS they deal with, even if you get it by himself, he's got two turrets to back him up at the same time. But uh, we're not talking about Geth here, we're doing collectors. So uh, excuse me for getting off topic here. Uh, it's, uh, I, I'm not going to lie, it's difficult to to fill all the time and I'm trying to keep these uh, these solos continuous with content. I mean with uh, commentary, sorry, content. Yeah, con commentary content. There we go. So, uh, excuse me if I ramble a bit. Excuse me if I uh, repeat myself a bit. I'm doing the best I can here for you guys. So, try to keep things interesting. Um, so, I have uh, done my first rotation. Uh, that line of sight right there, I really should have taken a little more advantage of. It's a really good line of sight. Um, it, it's probably the best line of sight on this map. But as you can see there, that banshee came right through the wall. Uh, I mentioned before, you really got to watch out for that on this solo. Uh, even when you're playing four-player uh, platinum or four-player any anything, if there's a banshee around, you got to watch that wall there because she loves to teleport through it. And if you're on the other side, then you are banshee breakfast. So I am uh, trying to play a little more cautious right now. I'm I'm, I'm moving a little bit faster than I like to move, but um, I I have two gels left, three survival ops, four rockets, four thermals, and I really don't want to screw this up. Uh, this is my first attempt here, and I'm thinking right now how beautiful and nice it would be if I don't have to play this map again, <laughs> because it's a lot of time to invest. These Platinum Solos, it's a lot of time to invest. You know, every, every attempt, if you're making it to wave 7 through 9 on every attempt, and it takes you three attempts, that's like almost three hours plus, you know, uh, 
you want to take a break between each attempt and you know grab a glass of water use the restroom etc uh, but it's it's a lot of commitment and it's very intense it's it's nerve-wrackingly intense um, depending on the enemy depending on the difficulty of course is gonna it's gonna rack your nerves a little more or less but you know I don't care what level you're playing platinum I know I've said this before also it's you know playing giant against reapers would be considered one of the easier platinum solos but I, I think using the word easy and platinum solo in the same sentence is just not doesn't make sense because it's not easy it, it really is not easy I think that it is a great goal It's a great accomplishment I have a lot of friends that are doing solos and they would all tell you the same thing it becomes a very addictive thing it, it's so gratifying when you complete these things with these solos even uh, if you're doing lower level solos it's you're, you're challenging yourself and you're pushing the bar you're you're pushing your limits and uh, whenever you push the bar whenever you push your limits and you succeed I think that is one of the greatest feelings in in the world so one thing I'm definitely doing here that I probably shouldn't be doing I'm spending a lot of times looking back now I'm wasting ammo I'm wasting time on a lot of banshees I think that it's really important that you don't really like to kill a banshee before I get overwhelmed by other enemies is probably not gonna happen so what I probably should be doing here is really not putting any effort into those banshees at all uh, any of the bigger enemies Praetorians banshees uh, I, I think I wasted a lot of time on this map by really trying to get them down when I should have just been focusing on the smaller enemies till I hit the wave budget um, I, I really wasn't planning on completing this platinum solo this was more of just trying to work the bugs out and it just happened to work out and uh, I happened to get a full extraction but definitely a, a, a really important strategy is kill the smaller enemies uh, keep killing smaller enemies until you hit that wave budget and uh, then you don't have to sit there and spend you know three minutes on each banshee trying to you know trying to kill one banshee when you could kill two abominations in the t in you know 15 seconds so uh, I spent way too much time uh, working on these banshees and, and the bigger enemies when I should have just been like I said focusing on the smaller enemies so every time I do one of these solos sometimes I make the same mistake twice sometimes I make it three times but definitely going back and watching these solos really helps me progress uh, learn from my mistakes please <laughs> uh, I, I'm not I'm not afraid to admit when I make mistakes I am the first person to admit it I'm definitely my own worst qu worst critic um, I like I said I make mistakes all the time uh, I put a lot of hours in this game and I'm still making mistakes I'm I'm constantly learning um, you know they say teaching is learning too right so uh, I really enjoy doing these videos I really enjoy doing the instructional videos I learned so much by doing them I, I love it when you guys comment in my discussion board below uh, you know even if you guys are second guessing something that I say you know that I can go back I can do some more research on it and really check you know to see you know okay well was this a good build was this the best decision you know like uh, you know was this uh, this rotational pattern was that the, the best way to do it you know like I so any comment you guys have I respect I, I take it to heart I, I analyze it, I, I question it and discuss it, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not high on myself here, you know, I, I love hearing from you guys, um, so please don't don't be shy, if you guys got a question, if you guys got a concern, let me know, please let me know, I, I would I would love, I love hearing from you guys. Um, so I, I'm on wave 9 here, <clears throat> trying to wrap up the wave here, uh, it's definitely taking a lot longer than I, I wanted to, I think a big part of it is because I have two metagels left. Uh, I wasn't expecting to make it all the way through to the end, and I am actually almost making it through to the end. Another thing also is i got to be very careful here. Uh, there is phantoms on the board, there are banshees on the board, and the opportunity for being insta-killed is very high. Um, the abominations, uh, a lot of times you'll find the abominations won't kill you, but they will get you killed. The last thing I need to happen here is have an abomination jump on my back and have a phantom walk up and just be waiting for me to uh, to crunch that abomination for a quick insta sync. So I think that's a big part, honestly, why the abominations are worth so much. Um, they're they're very fast, they're very aggressive, and they are walking time bombs. If they're not possessed, they still pop and they will take your shield gate down to you know straight down to your health. Like 
with, with one explosion. So, I mean, even if they're not possessed, you got to be very careful around them. Uh, you know, if they are possessed, I'm sure all of you who have played platinum, I'm not platinum, sorry, played against collectors, you know, uh, <laughs> their the explosion radius of the of their detonation is massive. It is massive. I really wish that uh, their explosion did some damage to the enemy because uh, <laughs> you could really use that for you to your advantage uh, in in uh, these solo uh, these solo runs here. Uh, at least, you know, even if it didn't do damage, if it maybe stun stun the enemies or something along those lines, I, I, I would really would have liked to see that incorporated with uh, the collectors. So uh, I'm pretty sure the wave is winding down here. I, I'm able to kill that banshee there without uh, being too uh, uh, too bothered by other enemies on the board. Looks like just the swarm there got me. And man, those swarmers are so annoying. Let me tell you. Uh, so many times, uh, I, I just, especially with power-based characters that that I've been, you're basically shut down. You know, if you have a power-based character, you, you are timed out. There is not a lot you can do. Uh, another thing I think I could have done to speed up the time is a lot of times I'm at the bottom of the ladder here, and I find myself waiting. And it, it may only be for, you know, 10, 20 seconds, but that 10, 20 seconds, if I'm doing four or five rotations on each round, you know, that's, you know, that's like about two minutes on each round. You know, depending, sometimes it's longer than 10 to 20 seconds. Sometimes I'm spending 30, 35, 40 seconds down there. You know, it just all adds up. You know, we, we have nine rounds, uh, let's see, seven rounds, not including three, six, and ten. That, you know, that that's seven more minutes on top of the, the on top of the, the total time there. So, I mean, if you're looking for speed, there's a lot of little things you can do definitely to increase the speed. Um, I think that killing quicker can be very dangerous, though, at the same time, right? Because uh, if you kill an enemy coming from your right side, you know, 9 out of 10 times, he's going to spawn on your left side. So y you really got to find a good balance here. It's uh, it's very tricky, um, especially when you're first starting to do solos. You know, finding that balance is, is, ve it is very tricky. Uh, running across that straightaway there, going to get ammo, that's another thing. You know, th there's a lot of time wasted right there also. Uh, I'm just waiting here. I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting. Finally, there we go. We have a, f a phantom coming. You know, so th there's there's a lot of downtime. I think the bigger maps you're going to find that happen uh, a little more often than say, you know, Glacier. Uh, Glacier is a very fast-paced map. Even Ghost, I found it, it's a bigger map, but it seemed like the the enemies got to me <coughs> very quickly. Uh, so there wasn't as much wasted time. Um, a lot of times too, you you need a breather. You know, the intensity level, like I said, of these platinum solos is very high. So a lot of times it's nice just to kind of get to some far corner of the map and just take a breath and relax for a second. Uh, you know, a lot of people need that. Some people don't. But, you know, it, it's nice. You know, take a breath, relax. And, oh, look at what we got here. So I'm really glad now that I saved those four rockets. Uh, we have targets here. i got to be really careful take my shot. Uh, there's one down. Um, so I'm just going to kind of run around the board here and chase these targets down the best I can. It's very dangerous wave 10 against collectors. There is a lot of enemies on the board. So I, I gotta be, as you can see, I'm getting stun locked all over the place. Those primes are just nasty with their stun lockingness. So we got the third target. I'm kind of trying to train the enemies over to this end of the board, looking for an opportunity to separate this target from the other enemies. And it looks like he's coming up behind this, this uh, Banshee and this Abomination here. And uh, there's really no way I'm, I'm going to be able to get past him right there. So I'm going to go back door here. And we got our prime at the top. So this is a very dangerous move on my behalf. And I'm just going to try and find a little angle there, but it's not going to happen. So I've got to rotate a little bit further. Uh, this is a dangerous move here also. Taking the ladder with, uh, with an enemy at the bottom of the ladder is always a dangerous move. Uh, you're very vulnerable using ladders. And uh, there's that... Praetorian, and I got it. Uh, that was very close to the Banshee there. That, that would have been really depressing if I would have got picked up there at that point. So I got one more target to go, and then I got a really big cleanup. And uh, I'm not going to lie, man, when I get to these, these last couple waves, my hands are shaking. I, I am so focused. Uh, <laughs> it's a very, very intense experience. I keep repeating myself here, but I just can't put an emphasis on how intense this is. All right, so I got my fourth target. My fourth target, sorry, and uh, now I just got to clean up. I got eight enemies on the board, and I just got to get them one at a time. 
and uh, work down this uh, this last little uh, amount of enemies here. So I'm going to take my time, be very careful here. I'm at the bottom of the ladder. Uh, this is a good opportunity to take this Praetorian out here. Uh, it's pretty much by itself. But as you can see, they're very aggressive. Um, I'm, I'm in a good spot here, but I, I think probably the best thing to do at this point, <coughs> if you don't have rockets, is uh, you know get rid of all the captains, get rid of all the small enemies. Uh, I have to apologize for the rocket on my back there. That's just kind of the last thing I'm thinking about at this point. Um, normally I would have taken that off. I, I'm pretty sure I took it off earlier in the game. But uh, yeah, there's a rocket on my back. I apologize. Big vacuum cleaner eyesore. Um, and uh, there's one down. Seven to go. So we got a Banshee here. And uh, I think that's the only thing on this end of the board with me right now. So if I can take this Banshee out, then, then I'm doing pretty good. i got six enemies left after this. Uh, this is definitely a good opportunity for me to use my thermal clips uh, just to help. You do, uh, I know I've probably mentioned this before also, I keep on saying that, but um, using your thermal clip, you have, I don't know how, many, how much time it is, I think it's about 20 seconds you have to use the clip after activating your spare thermal clip. Uh, you have a damage bonus of about 30%, and basically it's either as soon as you use the clip or as soon as about 20 seconds wears off. I Don't quote me on the time, but I know that's about the approximate. So let's say I had a javelin and I used all six of my thermal clips. As long as I can use that, uh, I can activate all six of them before 20 seconds is up and then shoot my javelin. That one shot there is going to be like an extra, uh, what is it, let's see, six times three is 180 percent more damage with that javelin shot so if i have phasic rounds that's going to go straight through the shield gate straight into the armor or health or whatever the enemy has to offer for defenses and it is going to be devastating so what I'm, my point here is is that let's say for example this Praetorian here I, I get him down to two bars of health and i'm out of ammo i just use my thermal clip really quick that gives me a reloaded clip and then a 30 percent bonus to that reloaded clip uh, so i can you know, potentially finish that Banshee, the Atlas, the Praetorian in this situation, you know, off, right? And so it's uh, it's good to use your thermal clips for that. And uh, as you can see here, I'm going to show an example really quick. Uh, another thing you can do is, as soon or before your clip runs out, you can use the thermal clip. See right there, I used the thermal clip, it reloaded my ammo, I didn't have to stop shooting at all, and I took that Banshee down to two bars, reloaded finish the banshee off and now i'm going into the possessed uh praetorian right there so those thermal clips can really help you on the later waves or even on the earlier waves sometimes it, it just helps you finish an enemy off when the cl when the when it's very when it's a very close call or when you need to kill that enemy and you're about to get pushed off a position for example targets um thermal clipping an enemy when there's targets can save you a rocket which can make or break the success of your uh solo right so I, I definitely would recommend using those thermal clips wisely. Uh, don't use them if you don't need them, basically, is what I'm trying to say, because they can really come in handy. They can really help out in a tight situation. So I'm back at my starting point here. I've, uh, I've cut down the, way the, the remaining enemies pr pretty much down to, I think I have about four enemies left. I, I kind of lost count there. So I got this uh, Prime here alone. I'm going to definitely take advantage, advantage of that situation and uh, Prime's down and uh, I'm getting close, I'm getting close guys, I'm almost there. So I'm going to uh, wait here again for the next enemy to come around the corner. It looks like another Prime. I've gotten the ammo, I'm doing alright here. And he has his buddy behind him, Mr. Praetorian. Oh, two Praetorians. So I, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this Prime off here, but I'm definitely going to try. Uh, it got me down. I got one gel left. Oh my goodness. It is getting dangerous now. So I'm moving on out of here. I'm going to go move somewhere and get a better position. Uh, move up the back flank here. I know that I keep saying that uh, I want to make my solos faster. But a big part of that is that I want these to be enjoyable to you guys. I, I want them to be you know, not an hour and a half long because a lot of you guys don't have an hour and a half to commit to watch just one solo video. And, and that's a pretty, that's like watching a movie, right? So I, I try and make them quicker just for that sense. Um, I would recommend if you guys are doing this solo, especially your first attempts, uh, don't worry about time at all. Really, don't worry about time. It really doesn't matter. What really does matter is that you succeed with full extraction. 
um, you know, the, the longer you take, the more opportunity for mistakes. But at the same time, if you try to move really fast, you are making yourself vulnerable. You're opening yourself up for mistakes also. So just find a pace, find a pace that works for you. You know, it, you don't have to be super fast. You don't have to get through it super fast at all. It's uh it's a massive great accomplishment doing a platinum solo so if you guys are watching these as guides and you're watching these to try and help you succeed with your platinum solos you know it's all about you getting the primary objective and that is full extraction if it takes you two hours three hours four hours it really doesn't matter if you do a platinum solo that's it you got it done you know kudos to you you know do whatever it takes to make it happen you know, once you start doing it over and over, you do it a couple times over, you can start worrying about refining it more, finding ways to cut time, shave time down. But honestly, you know, at the grand scheme of things, it's about that full extraction. Uh, it's it's a great accomplishment. Like I said, I, I anyone who does it, I my hat is off to you again and again. So it looks like we got this Praetorian here. I should be able to finish him off on this line of sight. Uh, I think I see a Prime there behind him also. The Praetorian's got one bar of health. Praetorian is down. So... I'm going to go reload on ammo again. Like I said, this Harrier, man, this thing, I swear, it must have cost me at least 10 minutes using this Harrier. I know it kills quick, but, you know, you, you definitely, uh, the amount of time you spend getting ammo out of the ammo box, I think, balances out the speed that you're killing enemies with. So I'm definitely being very careful, grabbing some more ammo, because it's probably going to take me the whole 115 uh, rounds plus the 36 in the chamber to finish this uh, prime off here. Uh, if you notice, I'm going for headshots. Definitely headshots are where it's at. Uh, if you go for headshots, it's going to make all the difference in the world. I, I don't know exactly what the multiplier is, but it's definitely very decent. So we're down to extraction. I have one gel left, one survival op one thermal clip and they all spawn in that little cubby there so I'm gonna instantly cut through the middle here a little improvise there uh, what I was hoping for was that they would spawn out and I would be able to hang out in the LZ for a little bit and then I could move down around like horseshoe back go around you know like how I normally do it and uh, on this extraction we have dragoons and I really am not happy about the pace that I just got pushed to this far corner of the map uh, I really wanted, I was hoping that maybe by the time I got here I'd have like 50 seconds, maybe 45 seconds left on the clock. So I, I'm a little nervous right now. I, I don't have time to make it all the way back to the LZ and then rotate around the map one more time. So I got to try and stall as much as possible here. Um, so I think what I do here is a little improvising here. I come to this point of the map, I have a prime across there. If I get down, I'm in big trouble. So this is about the only cover you have right there. I'm going to cut down the middle of the map here to the base here. And uh, I'm just trying to waste time here. Uh, that prime up there is, is trouble. If I try and go through that part of the map, he's going to melt me. So going up the ladder here, I, I was able to cut some time down. I'm going to hang out here for a minute. And if you noticed uh, the enemies that came down that way, uh, looked like an ab abomination just double back so he's going to try and meet me around uh, where the extraction is and the dragoons just race to the top of the ladder really quickly so i'm just yeah there's the abomination uh 22 seconds left on the clock i'm going to try and uh, just kind of drag my butt here uh, as much as i can believe it or not i am even though i'm running i'm trying my best to waste time uh, 10 seconds left on the clock. I'm really nervous. We have an abomination. I was able to detonate him on the other side of the wall. Thank goodness. And I'm down. Two, three seconds left. I get back up. Use my survival ops. Oh, no, I didn't use my survival ops. I apologize. But anyways, I got up in the nick of time. Uh, very close call. Mission success. Uh, thank goodness I got that. I'm really glad I didn't have to play that map again because, uh, like I said, Giant isn't one of my favorite maps. But... I really appreciate your guys' views. I really appreciate your guys' subscriptions and your support. Uh, you guys have all been great. I'm at 400 subs now. Uh, that's amazing. I never expected to have that many subscribers. Um, that's another Platinum Solo for the drawing board. Um, I'm going for every single map. I, I hope to be one of the first people to do every single map uh, on Platinum Soloed. And, uh, I, like I said, guys, I really appreciate your support. You guys have all been great. All your output, your feedback, it's all been great. Uh, so much positive feedback. I'm just, I'm really mind blown that there's that much positivity out there. 
So thanks again, guys. Thank you for your views. Thank you for your subscriptions. I know I keep repeating myself here, but I just really want to put an emphasis on how much I appreciate you guys. So 400 subs and climbing. Thanks again. And until next time, take care.